Oh, we're still here in Adelaide, Australia. And today, I want to go look at some flea markets. In the last episode, we game hunted all over Perth and a lot of Adelaide. I'm talking EB Games, JB Hi-Fi's, Cashies. If you want to go watch that first part, you probably should. I'm gonna start my day at Brighton Market. It's a cold Australian morning. There's nothing like a cold Australian morning. It's not that cold. It's kind of nice, actually. I'm on a solo adventure to this flea market this morning because Kim doesn't feel very well. It wasn't what I remember for Brighton Market. Brighton Market used to be huge. Now it's just a small parking lot. Having said that, I was actually surprised by how many people were here selling video games. There was a guy that had a bunch of Japanese imported games because he used to work teaching English in Japan. And then a ton of comic books and yeah, there was so much cool stuff. I forgot that I don't have any Australian money. I only have American. But I did find someone that accepted Apple Pay and I got Kim a little surfboarding Pikachu. But hopefully this will make her feel a bit better. Also, she gave me a dollar off and I didn't even ask. So I guess you could say I still got it. <laughs> haggling skills at a flea market is what I meant by that. In the last episode, I showed you what was in my travel bag. You know, I buy Switch, my Steam Deck, and XR glasses. These XR glasses have quickly become my gaming hack. Giant 135 inch screen with me wherever I have my hand. But not only that, this is Vitch's new model, the Pro XR glasses, and they are the best XR AR glasses on the market. I've tried a bunch of the top brands and they don't even come close to Vitch. There's 120 hertz of a 135 inch screen in here, which is 10% bigger than the last screen. And it's 120% brighter than before. And the screen is so bright and clear. Myopia adjustments, you can just adjust this dial on top to whatever vision you have or need. There is next gen tech in these things. Essentially, you can have the glasses see through, so you can actually use them like sunglasses, but still have a giant screen in front of them. Or at the touch of a button, you can completely black it out. This is such a cool feature. I mean, everything about these just scream quality. We also have the mobile dock. The glasses work great with like the Steam Deck. All you gotta do is plug them straight into the Steam Deck's port and they'll work natively. But this dock, this is their new pro model dock to go along with the glasses. And you do have to grab this if you wanna play on the Switch, but there's actually a ton of bright sides to having this extra boost. While it's plugged in and you're playing, it actually acts as a charge bank. There's two ports in the back for glasses. Not only does this dock support 3D content now, but this thing is also compatible with all other USB-C displays, including all of the other XR glasses that are on the market. But it doesn't stop there. Vitcha, and this is so cool, have partnered with 8-Bit Dude, translucent, just like the special edition Steam Deck with the orange trim and translucent theme. Click the links down below if you want to check these out. My code BEATEMUPS will get you 10% off their entire store, except these, because these are brand this, these are brand new. I went and grabbed Kim, and we're going to the Paraka markets. A lot of the original Game Quest episodes were recorded at this farmer's market with the Nah, it's cheap, guy. Nah, they're cheap. This is like really old lore for the channel. We used to have an arch nemesis. I can't really remember. He always had a ton of video games and they were all insanely overpriced. And his catchphrase, when we would ask like, hey, could you do $5 off of this? Like, could you knock a buck off of this? He'd always go, nah, it's cheap. Nah, they're cheap. And so the nah, it's cheap guy became quite a character in the show back in the day. Sadly, he's not here. In fact, no one is here. In fact, this is barely even a swap meet for anything other than vegetables. I don't know what happened in the last 10 years, but it's gone away from being a swap meet and more apples. There was some knickknacks there, but no video games. Yeah, it wasn't really what it used to be, which is a shame. We're gonna leave and head to Patty's Market, mate. I used to love this market, but we very rarely actually found games. It was mostly toys and collectibles. In fact, Kim and I visited Australia in 2019, and I wanted to try and make one of these videos then it just 
never worked out. But we did film a little bit here with Chris and Michael and I tried filming a little bit, but I never used it. So it's a good thing that we did film because it's gone now. There's only a couple of little stores here now off to the side. One of them was cool. He had a bunch of Pokemon cards, but he gave us the whole down low skinny on the situation with the flea markets in Adelaide, Australia. Apparently everything's closing down. The people that were in there retired and closed it down. The Port Adelaide swap meet flea market, which was really cool. It was right on the water. That closed down. And then he said Brighton market's about one of the only ones left. And I went to that this morning and that was half the size as normal. So... That's what, that's what I thought. Good thing we filmed this market in 2019 and then I did nothing with the footage so that I could show you it now. <laughs> We're gonna make a little mini teensy tiny game quest video. I don't know if you guys even remember what game quest is. All right, we are here at Peggy's Market <laughs> Flea Market with my old childhood friend, Michael. We are waiting for Chris to get here because I haven't seen Chris and, and here he comes now. <laughs> Chris, it's oh been so God. long. Oh, the beard. Look at the hair. <laughs> this flea market was one of our favorites. We never really found anything here at uh, one time. In that shed over there, we found so much stuff, yeah. like a box master system. So if we could find, if we could recreate that magic today <laughs> and find something cool, then it would probably mean something. Sure enough, that same lady that had the master system still has a ton of games. Dive in. Dive in, Christopher. Like the old days. Look at this. Finding nothing. Is it like a girl Batmobile? No, it's the monster high car. I don't know about you guys. I don't really need any sport games on PlayStation. It's not the best games in the world, but games I didn't have, like Witcher 2, AFL Live, and then Avatar, purely for the achievements. What'd you get? Oblivion mm. for five dollars. Such a nice push up <laughs> of your face. <laughs> right around the corner from Patty's Market is signature Vietnamese Thai food. You might be wondering why that's important. So about 11 years ago, I decided to start a YouTube channel with my friend Kane. And the very first place we filmed was a retro video game store that was there. It closed down while I was still living in Australia all those years ago, but this was the first spot I filmed any video for for the channel that you're watching now. Now it's Thai food, probably a better place, honestly. So you remember when I was talking about my grandparents' gaming garage and seeing all those old games that I used to play? That was nostalgic, because I used to play those, but those weren't mine, those were my uncles. I actually assumed all of the gaming stuff from my childhood was long, long gone. But while I was hanging out with my brother and sister on this trip, my brother mentioned, do I still have your Game Boy? I had no idea that you still had this. I remember I had this and I had fire red and that's honestly all I remember having seeing this was a crazy throwback now I remember I did have Dragon Ball Z Legacy of Goku which it's actually really good yes I was surprised by how good that was he did tell me that he had it because he wanted to give it to me he's like it's yours you should have it and it's very sweet of him to offer but it's also his I had like 300 hours in this in this very fire red <laughs> and almost every Pokemon, and then I went to school one day, came home, and little baby Tiny Connor <laughs> had started a new game and deleted my save file. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? This is yours now. At this point, it's like, um, if I didn't want them anymore, they would somehow find their way to you. You know, I can always visit, obviously, America, and then uh, pick it up on the way back, and then I can... True, we could yeah. trade off Yeah. On, yeah. On then you weekends. can chew the bottom of it. There you go, yeah, yeah, Make yeah. that all gummies. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's a nice, that's a nice hoodie. See that? It's my yeah. brother. Yeah. He's never played Zelda. Not once. Without getting too emotional, we all had a terrible childhood. I often talk about how I had a bad childhood and how much my mom and dad sucked. Well, believe it or not, they had the same mom and dad. We didn't get much of a chance growing up to have a relationship. We formed a relationship in our adult years. And one of the only things I ever gave him, ever, in his life, when we were kids, was this Game Boy. And he still held onto it this whole time, so I'd rather he have it. But if he ever tries to sell it again, I want it to be to me. <laughs> Okay, today's a new day and an exciting day because Chris, the cameraman, finally has a day off work. And we're gonna go look for video games. It has been a very, very long time. I'm 
not that interested in collecting games anymore. <laughs> but it's good to hang out, um, reminisce on the old times. I know not everybody used to watch those old videos back in the day. Most of them only have about 15, 20,000 views, but it is how the channel started. And for most of those episodes, Chris was either filming or a part of the episode. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does it feel weird to be back on camera? A hundred percent. Many, many years since we've done this. I know, it's been like 10 years. Yeah. What are we doing today, huh? We're gonna go game hunting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One of my favorite memories of Chris and I making videos is when we drove to Melbourne together in his very old car that ended up breaking down on the road trip. It was just so many fun memories. I mean, that one wasn't fun <laughs> for him. Although we did laugh about it while we were together on this recent trip. But I do honestly thank Chris so much for helping me make those videos back then when nobody else would because he very much helped keep this channel alive back then. He's also just one of the nicest and wholesome people I've ever met in my entire life. Oh my God, you're doing your old job. Uh -huh. Where's the cameraman? Uh -huh. So this is Southern Games. It is the old, well, this is my car, but we're headed to Southern, well, it's not even my car, it's a rental car. <laughs> we're headed to Southern <laughs> Games, which is the last remaining independently mom and pop owned store in the entire South Australia for video games. And since I was here last, they moved locations. They actually got a bigger location, which tells me they're doing good. The reason why we went there so much is they were so nice to us. The guy that owns the store used to love when we went to film there. In fact, he started giving us a discount for just coming in and filming because he loved the promotion that it gave him. And it's so funny walking towards the doors of the store now, all these years later. It's the same guy. Dude, I think I just saw him smile. Yeah, I think he knows us. <laughs> Does he Hey, young guys. Hello, mate. Good, man. How you been? Yeah, good, man. <laughs> you remember me yeah. at all? <laughs> I haven't seen this guy in a decade, and he remembers us. I haven't been to Southern Games since Wood left, so it, it was interesting walking in there and having him recognize us both like it was 10 years ago. Yeah, I'm back. I haven't been back in like five, six years. Yeah, because you've been in America. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm, I'm back and I'm filming. You're the only remaining video I know, game they're store. All gone. There's, what there's, happened to them all? all? You got all these new ones at that time. Yeah, and then it changed again, so... Yeah, Dude, I'm happy you're here, and you moved. Yeah, we moved, we actually yeah. moved there. They tripled our prices, so we... Oh, really? See you later. He's moved locations since I last went to his store, and this new location is way better. Looks like an actual structured, clean store. The new store is lovely. Way, way nicer than the dingy old store that, that it used to be in. And of course, they still sell video games. Well, I don't have Fate Extello Link. I don't know if I need Fate Extello Link, but for the sake of grabbing something, I might. Hello, it's still a bit still. Oh, it is. It's also I not the one I wanted. Trying to get rid of it. That's because I, I can't sell it. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Grab the more expensive one. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, 30 bucks for you, son. 30? Oh, I still get that discount all these years later. Hmm. Thank you so much. I can't believe this man not only still recognizes us, but is still giving us the discount 10 years later. I love this guy. Did your son still help you out too? Yeah, yeah, he's still here. So it's just me and my son. So okay. I, just... I love that. Yeah. Literally a family owned business yeah. right here in South Australia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come check him out. Chris didn't really want anything from this store. Nothing that I, I <laughs> need these days. <laughs> I think he stopped doing that when I left. Sadly, at least we thought that was it as far as stores in South Australia. Again, all the others had closed down. It's much harder now, clearly. All the markets are closed down. Few stores around still. But my brother was with us and started looking on his phone and found a place called Hobby Kingdom right where me and my brother used to live, right across the street. Look, more games. It looks promising. <laughs> it looks promising. <laughs> Alright, let's go here. This was a very neat little store. Growing up, this used to be a doctor's office, I'm pretty sure. Easily one of my favorite and one of the coolest Nintendo Switch games is Astral Chain. Made by Platinum Games, it was the weird and wacky game we got while we were waiting for them to make Bayonetta 3. I was initially upset that we weren't getting Bayonetta 3 and then ended up loving Astral Chain more. I have what I thought was the collector's edition for this game, but I'd never seen this collector's edition. I have an Astral Chain collector's edition. 
but not this one. I have never seen that before. And it's a pain because I actually do want this, but this is not suitcase friendly. I don't know if that means it was PAL only, maybe only released in Australia, only released in Europe. I'm not sure. But what I do know is I love Astral Chain. And if there is a collector's edition I don't have, I'm probably going to try and buy it. There's a $150 price tag on this. And I figure US, that's probably about a hundred bucks. I had him open it up because I wanted to see what was in it. And right at the top, there is a signed certificate from the creators of the game and a limited 5,595 out of 23,000. There's also a soundtrack in here, an art book. I'm glad I had him open it though because the game wasn't in there. No game? Or is that the game? That's the game. <laughs> Why is it separate? Don't ask me. I'm not sure what was going on there, but he just put the game in for me. So I'm glad we had him open it. They were also extremely nice in this store. It's Adelaide, so it goes without saying, but people here are nice. What'd you think? Yeah, really nice store. Yeah, cool, what'd you but... get? Zilch. <laughs> <laughs> we even went to a cash converters that was awesome. This cash converters that I'm in now is the one that I used to come to all the time. It was right by my house. I knew someone that worked here. He always pulled things out of the back before they hit the shelves. There's so many games in here. Xbox, PlayStation 2, NES. Like this feels like a game store more than a trade in for cash type store. This is the weirdest thing, but this cash converter specifically has like a thousand pops, if not more. And every single one is priced at nine dollars it had by far the most games i'd seen at a cash converter so far 3do games this is a honestly this store this cashies is a better retro game store than anything else <laughs> yeah, we've seen like actual old stuff including a old portable commodore 64. yeah most interesting thing we saw all day portable commodore 64 is in built-in monitor to the system built-in disk drive really cool looking unit i don't have those eight hundred dollars to spend on a commodore 64 <laughs> though <laughs> had a really nice time catching up with chris i really didn't want to say goodbye to him at the end i hope he can come visit me sometime soon or I see him again soon because I honestly love this man so much and I hope he knows that. I really do appreciate him and thank him for being my friend and still being my friend all these years later. All right, want to do it in five more years? Yeah, sounds good. I'll see you in five years, <laughs> maybe in the US next time. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> This is now the final day. We've done it all. Flea markets, the game stores, the island full of little rats. This final day, almost like I planned it, happens to be the big Adelaide Toy Fair Day. So we're at the Adelaide Showgrounds because there's supposed to be a mega toy fair here today and we just accidentally walked into Comic Con. There's also a Comic Con here today, which I didn't even know Adelaide had a Comic Con. But then we went into Comic Con and they said it was $50 a person and we said, Nah, the Adelaide Toy Fair happens every year. Actually, I've done two episodes at this toy fair already in 2015 and 2014, which yeah, was a decade ago. <laughs> I don't even know how to feel about that. The same toy fair that Chris and I went to 10 years ago. It's on again. I'm taking Kim and my brother and sister. This is a huge floor with a lot of vendors. This nostalgia here is my nostalgia. This is all the stuff I grew up with. When I was a kid, we found like three of these at a garage sale for $5. I played with them so much, even though they had nothing in them. Like they were empty, but I still played with them. And I was seeing things here that I haven't thought about or heard anyone talk about forever. One of them specifically was Tarzos. I haven't even said that word in about 20 years. I don't believe we had pogs growing up in Australia. I could be wrong, but I know what we did have and that's Tarzos, which are essentially the same thing. I had this exact binder. This green book is full. It's a complete collection. They want 200 for it, which is about 150 American. Oh man, I wanted this. So I, I actually kind of regret it. Like at least my Digimon I can play with. I'm just gonna put this on a shelf and be like, yeah, there's all of them in there. There's so much cool stuff here. Kim's looking at street sharks. We're also finding a lot of cars. I don't know what it is about Australia and cars. Almost every vendor has these toy cars. So as I said, on this trip, I've been looking out for Game Boys specifically. So Bob told me to look out for a Game Boy Light. Oh, so it says light on it. They have a few Game Boys over here, but I don't think any of them are a light. But I am surprised how many Nintendo things we're finding 
finding. I'm seeing a Donkey Kong Game & Watch, which I already have one of those. None of these are jumping out to me until this is a Australian only exclusive official Game Boy. Is this a, an official like Australian? Yeah, it's the Australian release. Yeah, it's the Olympic one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Classic green and gold colors with an Australian flag slapped right in the middle of the front. This is my big Australian go home vacation adventure where I'm looking for a Game Boy. I gotta get it. And also it turns out they had two of these Game Boys, one with a new improved a modded screen. A redone screen you said? Yeah, so it's just the screen's been replaced on that one. I ended up going for the modded screen. I just wanted the better screen. It actually is sick. The only thing that's upsetting is everyone always lost the back plate to Game Boys back in the day and both of the Australian ones they had, they lost. So they just replaced it with a clear one instead. And I mean, it gets the job done and you can't really tell. It just felt too perfect to not get it. You know? Because I'm in Australia. Because I'm in Australia. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was nice to meet you guys. Thank you. Super retro squad, those guys. But yeah, very happy with this. This is probably my second favorite thing I bought on the trip next to the Digivice. The prices on the games here, I mean, they're just Australian prices. Hundreds of dollars for the GameCube games. Nothing's really like a deal, like gotta snag this. Plus, for the most part, I have all of the retro stuff that I want. You know, I used to collect this stuff. This used to be my whole channel and I never saw anything that I bought back then. So I still have all of the old games I collected and I collected everything I wanted up to a certain point. Sure, there are gaps. I still want Conker's Bad Fur Day, but every time I find it, it's a couple hundred dollars. I'm seeing an original boxed Furby here, a sea of custom Lego minifigures, the original Croc. A lot of people talk about Crash Bandicoot and Spyro. Somehow I didn't play any of those. I played Croc. I had Croc 1 and Croc 2 and I loved them so much. The controls haven't held up that well, but I think the games themselves really have. More people need to play Croc. I decided not to buy it because I figured it's not that uncommon that I can't just buy it later if I do already have it. You remember how I said when we were at the Paraka Markets, I was looking for the Nudge cheap guy? Nah, they changed. Well, I'm standing here at this video game booth, marveling over how expensive the prices are. My camera wasn't recording and I promise I'm not making this up, but somebody asked if he could take like $10 off of a game that he had. And I kid you not, he said, nah, it's cheap. Nah, it's cheap. The more I stared at this man, the more I realized it's him. It's my old arch nemesis, James, the nah, it's cheap man from a decade ago, still doing his thing, still selling video games overpriced. Would you do 60 on this or are you set on 80? No, I set mine, set. That's All good. Right. That's very good in, that, in the box. Very nice. It is, yeah. You know, a lot of things have changed. Some things haven't changed. Nah, they changed. No, I said mine. Say. It's been a very long time, but I am 99% sure that I just saw the Nodge cheap guy from my videos way back when. This is probably only funny to me, my friends, and the few people that even remember, let alone watched my old videos. I think I used to be young. I thought I was funny. I was probably annoying, probably trying to be edgy with my videos. And I just found the fact that he always said notch cheap to very expensive games humorous. He's probably a lovely guy. <laughs> Since Comic-Con is so damn expensive, we were gonna do it, but we decided let's go do something more fun. And we drove to a petting zoo. Clarendon or something petting zoo and we all spent a while there petting kangaroos and seeing dingoes which by the way a dingo they look so sweet I know my footage of them they're like chewing on like a cow leg or something but they just look like good puppers that need homes a nice end of the trip because tomorrow we're going home I'm not looking forward to that flight home interestingly though when we left to get here as I said we went from New Jersey to Singapore on the way back it's actually quicker for them to go from Singapore to New Jersey across the Pacific Ocean, which means at the end of this trip, when we're finally home back in Pennsylvania, Kim and I would have literally traveled the globe. The flights suck, but if you can ever make it out to Australia or even my hometown of Adelaide, it's gorgeous. And there are so many cool things to do and see while you're there, not just look for video games. I wanna give a big thank you to all of you for watching this 
huge Australian trip, but also Kim for going with me and bearing through those flights. Chris and all of my friends that came out to hang out with me and help me film or even just get dinner. My brother and sister, my grandparents, my aunt, my uncle. I love you all so much. Zach for editing this video. All of you for watching for all of these years. It's so crazy to do essentially a game quest video again in 2024. Like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed these videos. I'll have more coming. And um, yeah, we got COVID. It's like a new variant or something. Kim's sick right now. So...